Welcome back to another video. There's water running in the back. So that's what that is. So it's, I'm doing a commission. It's got two people in it. So I'm sort of done with one of them, sort of. I'm probably going to go back to doing her again later. She's supposed to have like stuff over here and then stuff over here and on the shoulders, I think. But the figure number two, I haven't done her at all, right? So I've got her skeleton made ready. And I thought, hey, why not use this opportunity to show you how I paint skin? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to show you how I paint skin. Okay, so here we are with the figures. Uh, I have drawn out this one already. Uh, this is for a commission. Uh, so I'm not actually finished with this one. I will, uh, I will go back to this one again, this one later, but I feel like I've spent too much time on her already. So what I'm going to do now is move on to her and she will be, of course, wearing all this. Maybe not all of them, because they are supposed to be not in a combative situation. They're supposed to be relaxing somewhere at a beach. So maybe not the gun. And whatever this thing is, that's supposed to go like on her back. It's like a weapon of some kind. She's just going to be wearing everything else. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to just show how I am going to render her. At least we're going to start with her face. So the shade of brown I actually got from like right here, like in the corner, right? You see that like here in the corner, right? See that I got it from there. So I have her face here in view and I am, I have been blocking out the shadows. So I'm going to try doing that some more. Shadows go on top and her nose does this weird thing where it comes to a point. It's a bit strange. I don't know why it catches light, right? But then the like the rest of the nose doesn't. Maybe it's just the artistic license. It doesn't make too much sense. But it does make her look extra pointy like an elf. So I'm just going to try to I'm not trying to copy, right? Just to Oh, I guess you can call it trying to 70% copy like half-assed kind of copying so this is where the nose goes wait a minute lines this part is supposed to be placed higher up does it need to be higher? no there let's go with that uh, go back to the shadows layer and just shade the area under this nose. So there's going to be light coming from above, like going down like that from here. But it's not uh, that strong. Okay, like this. And she's got quite thin lips and it's it's quite pitted here um, quite deep the groove indentation here um, 
Okay, so thin lips, what else am I missing? Uh, okay, over here. Uh, she's quite a... She has quite the skinny looking face. Right, everything is sort of very skinny. Like, it's so close to her bone structure, seemingly. Okay, I think I have it looking quite close. And I made sure to give her a, a, a big forehead. Like, she doesn't have, seemingly have a big forehead, but whatever. I'm, I, I'm feeling like big forehead today. Uh, let's go for her pale mid-tone. Oh, and the forehead thing. I'm going to be giving her that gem stone that she's got stuck in, be in between her eyebrows anyway. So the forehead extra real estate would be helpful. Oh, and this is one way of drawing skin. It's quite rough, right? It's quite painterly. It gets the job done because all you really need is uh, planes that look like the facial structure of some person and then you just add shadows that's all you need really as long as it's not anything too weird like the colors i mean like as long as it's not eh, it's like a purple no not a purple person let's let's go with a yellow you know what i think <laughs> all of the uh races of people that exist in this world um whatever kind of people that don't have the skin color that we do let's say yellow and red and i'm just thinking green and purple those kind of people already exist in cinema anyway like orcs and night elves from video games there are even golden people from Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Uh, so she's got a visor here. So I don't think there's any skin color that I can go with to give an expo uh, to set as, as, as an example. It's uh, like a skin color that you would be using that wouldn't be confusing to whoever is looking at it. But I just think a better explanation would be as long as uh, it resembles a face. I don't think the color sh uh, should matter all that much. As long as it looks like a face and all of the shadows are where they should be to make it look like it's a person. I'm going to block it in. Well, and I'm blocking it in not using the lasso fill tool like this. Because I would like to have that texture. You know, it's uh, it's quite a big painting. It's at least how big is this? This is six thousand pixels. Very big. So with big uh, big canvases like this, it would be very good to just block in by hand like this because. Just by blocking it in like this, it sort of automatically adds detail because you, you don't get very clean lines like that, right? Even the sketches, the outlines look quite messy. So it would do you good to just draw everything by hand because the kind of things that make a painterly piece painterly is sort of a build up of many little things that you refuse to do especially things that you would only do when you are doing like let's say anime where you have clear cut outlines so for painterly pieces like this it's more ignoring um or more like just accepting that I'm not going to be ending up with any pristine looking painting with super clean edges. 
clear cut outlines, you know, all that kind of stuff. Not even the brush strokes will be all that accurate. So all of, at least, there could be many, um, many more things or just way of thinking that other artists keep in mind, not just me. But that's the, that, those are the only ones I can think of right now. But the, things like that, when doing painterly pieces like this, is what helps it look painter, uh, is what helps make it look painterly. Okay, I might be blocking it in a bit much here. Because I hadn't done the shadows for the rest of the body. Only for the face, right? Okay, I think let's go back to the face and let's try to render this. If I can properly render this, then I will next try to uh, just sort of color pick whatever colors I've done on the face and do it on the layer below for the rest of their body. I think I need to color pick that again. I need more shadows here. Okay. And over here, I need to erase. Oh, okay, I should be erasing here. There. That's better. Now, where was I? Uh, I was over here. And now I'm going to pick, color pick the brighter skin color here for the highlights, right? So let's zoom out over here. Make sure her face is in view. And let's start easy. Let's do this part. The upper eyelid. Let's do the eyes too. Uh, this area as well. It's not laying down the color as bright as I wanted. It's not as bright as whatever's in the picture. I must have selected the wrong pixel or something. But I'll fix that later because I think this is fine. It's like the highlights before the highlights. Stronger over here. Okay, a big area here with highlights on the forehead. Kind of like this. And she, uh, she's got like a cast shadow, right? Going across over there. Uh, diagonally on her forehead that there are none in this picture so I won't be doing that uh, make sure this is highlighted too this part this black one this is her eyebrow this is sort of like the wrinkly part on her forehead the part that wrinkles up because she's got her eyebrows sort of lifted like what a happy person would do because she's smiling okay so make this brighter what else i could make this brighter and here the lips sure chin Chin, not so much. Just a little bit. Let's brighten up her... More of her cheeks here. A little bit next to the nose again. And now... I'm thinking... We go quite close now to white. Let's give it a test. How's that? I think that's fine. That's bright enough. Um, over 
over here. Upper eyelid, a little bit on the eyes. Let's go with this brush here. Okay. I'm going to have to fix this again later on a new layer over everything. Okay, color pick. You know what, I quite like how she is just not very warm looking. Quite pale, not much reds and pinks and stuff going on on her face. Okay. The nose, even though it's not very illuminated seemingly in the reference picture, the thing about noses is they're quite oily, so they catch more light than other parts of the face. So it's usually always accurate if you just make the nose brighter than the rest. Okay. Okay, a thing that I like to do with the ears. So this is how human ears uh, are shaped. So we've got this Y, Y shaped thing going like this. So there's this half tube going up like that. And this part is cast in shadow a little bit. And it goes into like this weird prick looking thing. And this is where the ear hole is. Um, okay. Just make that more sharp. And there's like a little dip down here. And then it just goes up over here and connects to the Y shape. This one. There we go. The human ear. The only ear anatomy that I know. Haven't studied dogs and cats. But I'm thinking for those I can just make squiggles. Because what kind of crazy person <laughs> tries to remember the shape of a dog's ears. There. Let's add some highlights too. Why not? Oh yeah, um, since I haven't actually drawn her at all, right? Uh, I'm th um, I'll probably be going... Um, I'm I am probably going to be keeping this for her face. Like I'm going to be adding clothes, of course, later, but I'll be keeping everything else, right? Okay, so this is where the outlines are. I'm going to make a new layer on top of the outlines. And so this is the first character okay let's make a group here there let's put her in a group oh you know what no 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 that's okay uh, paint overs so what I'm going to be doing now is painting over everything. See how it's sort of blending in? It's quite nice. 
quite nice very very good very good sir this part here is too dark so let's brighten it put more of the skin color so the logic for this so far I'll demonstrate I'll use black to write so layer one will be shadows oh actually should be outlines over this or Or sketch, right? Let's move this closer. And then what goes below is the skin color. And it can go from mid-tone or like quite dark all the way to the highlights in one whole layer or just several depending on how you like to do it and then once you're done with that you go to another layer on top of everything I, I like to call this paint overs or fixes and we are at this stage right now so let's get back to the picture i believe i should be using this color now yep just brighten it up Take this highlight here, add it to the nose, this one nostril, and over here. Looking good. Um, let's do the eyes easy. This is how I like to do the eyes. Well, one of the ways I like to do the eyes. I paint the whole thing pure white. Like this. Right? it and I can take like a darker skin color like this one and paint over the upper uh, part just below of the eyelid that's actually too dark let's go with a pink okay just over here because the upper eyelid is casting some shadow this clearer of the eye which is the white part and for this part because it's not supposed to be pure white I'm just going to take a little bit of the skin color and then applying it to the eye so it's not pure white take more of that black to make the eye black again what kind of eye color does she have anyway can't tell is it a green it looks like a green Anyway, uh, we're going to stick with black for now. Like this. OK. 
Okay. Pick some of this color. There should be like a slither of just pink here. Okay, and also here, tear ducts. Erase out that black a little bit. Okay, this is nice. Cleaning this up a bit. Take some off for this. Oh, it's quite strong. Should I do it though? Maybe a little bit. Yeah, sure. Fix it up a bit over here. And uh, okay, take some of this to cover up that initial outline. And I'm going to erase some of these guides like this not all of it because it's dark enough to sort of help me just show that there's a visor a little slither of this visor showing up on that side of the cheek the face i mean but for the rest of the phase, over here you can just like pretty much delete, delete, clean it up. Um, just can delete this as well, like that. Quite fat eyelids. Very nice. I wish I had <laughs> eyelids like that. It's like an awning. Wow protruding outwards like that like an umbrella she wouldn't ever have to wear shades okay more paint overs here but since we're going to I think I'm planning on just leaving the background white so I'm not going to erase all of the outlines so what makes it painterly uh, to begin with so that's fine Take some more of this yellowish highlights color and add it to the more mid tone area of the face that needs more highlights. Like this one cheek. And actually, I think I can darken this area here, right below the nose. like that oh no I have to eat away at this and then it's supposed to come down into that indentation thingy that we have on our upper lip Okay, more of this yellow over here, and more of this gray too. More of this yellow on the chin down here. Uh, okay. I think we can probably 
get away with using pure white now for the nose. A little bit here. Not pure white enough. How's that? A bit much. Maybe just here. That's fine. Mm. Okay, here too. Sort of just where it's extremely bright on her nose in the actual picture. Let's brighten this one, this one highlight. Okay, put some more of this yellow into the this part. It's too dark. Like so. Her eyebrows, I'm thinking we can just leave. Because I have I don't really want to introduce that new red for now. So instead, let's go back to the skin layer, this one. And just introduce these colors into the other parts of the body. I'm going to skip the neck. I'm going to start with the shoulders now. And I'm probably not going to do this one much because I won't be keeping it. I'll just be showing you at least the basics of where shadows would tend to, tend, uh, to appear in relation to the shape of bodies. A little bit in the back here. Because the light is coming sort of from the upper left corner of the screen. Cover this up. All this black, it's supposed to be um, removed. It's not supposed to be this black, but she's wearing like a turtleneck anyway, right? That connects to her. Sorry, I've been calling it a visor, but it's not a visor. It's a, uh, what is it? I don't know, like a face protective armor sort of thing. Um... Some more shadows here so if you're thinking about why are there like let's say i add shadows here why are there shadows over there because the light is supposed to be coming from over here so why are the shadows over there well if this whole plane is completely flat then that theory would not be wrong however there are grooves and bulges all around the human body. So the parts where the parts that are more protruding would catch more light. And the parts that are indented would catch less light. AKA would be darker. So Shadows will will go there. Uh, I guess here it's quite dark here under the um under the arms. A little bit on the boob. Quite tricky, but let's try. Let's blend it, uh, blur this. Okay, that's fine. Blur it here too. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, here's fine. Let's go with the blender brush now. Just do it once gently, okay. And let's bring it up here. Whew, 
quite strong, but there, way better. Uh, I wonder if I want this to like cast a shadow. I guess I can do that here, even though I won't be keeping it. Oh, also, this part, on the shoulder, let's flip. I don't know what you call this, but there's like a muscle that goes over here. Okay, erase it more. So we can actually take this highlight here. Put it here. Blend like that. Highlight here. Uh, here. Just the parts that are more exposed to the light. And the arm is quite tubular in shape, right? So don't be afraid to gradate that as if it's an actual tube, like a cylinder. And this shadow over here can probably use more of the skin color. So it doesn't have to be completely in shadow. It's a bit hard to explain, but let's say if you've got like a big mass of just a shadowy area, it's never going to be completely in shadow. Let's say an area here probably would be darker. And then the rest down here and maybe here along the edges of the shadow would be darker like that and I don't do <laughs> I don't paint boobs much you know so I'm spending a long time on it what am I doing basically no idea, but I'm trying to just lay down strokes until it doesn't seem like until it seems like it makes some sense at least. That's what I'm trying. Oh, also, I think people have like darker, darker chests. Like there. Okay. Take this yellow, do I dare now add it finally to this area? I'm not gonna draw the tips by the way, the little nippy nippies, because there's just no need. I won't be keeping it anyway. Probably something like this, okay? Uh, white and white. Is it white? Oh, there's a little bit of yellow before the white. of the yellow
here. Here. Um, a larger, more diffused one. Here. The part where the shoulder becomes the chest. Let's make a more obvious one here along the arm because it's like tubular. I think it will, here it will be better. A little bit on the chin. Oh, that's not bright enough. Let's go with the white. Huh? Oh, because I painted over it. Okay, so I have to paint it here. There. Okay. Uh, going back to the yellow, yellow. More on the arm. And I think we can about, we're almost done here with this video. But since this is pretty much like a skin tutorial, there are some things that you would do. So I'm going to I'm going to do a bunch of stuff here, but I'm not going to keep it, right? So this is looking quite pasty because everything is looking quite monochrome, you know? So she's looking like she's made of clay. The thing is, and this works with black people with I don't know, like Asian type of white people, brown people, red people, everything works for white people what you do is you add reds and pinks and purples to everything and you're supposed to do something else too after that but let's start with that one uh so pinks let's start with the deep reds i prefer deep reds like darker deep reds but not so this is full opacity, right? I'm not going to go full opacity. Now. Let's go with uh, 50. Places that is supposed to have more blood, you make warmer, like this. Around the eyes, definitely the nose. Well, pretty much uh, almost the whole face. In fact, can I turn this into a multiply layer? Okay, we can. So we don't lose any of the detail underneath. Ah, it's actually my. It will probably be better if I use like an airbrush. Okay, here we go. Like this. So we add warms here and there. Bit too strong there in the nose. Get rid of it. The lips. A little bit in between the lower lip and the chin. A lot on the cheeks. The side sides of the head. Be generous here. Upper eyelids. Okay, in places like under the neck, sure, a lot. Uh, underarms, shoulders have a lot. Let's go darker. It's quite um, intense around the shoulders. Right, okay. chest here in the shadows or not okay so that helped at least a little bit right I think we can go with some oranges also but if we use too much warms it will look 
well, I guess if your your drawing is like set in Mexico, like in the movies, like that kind of vibe, it could work, right? But if your setting is in someplace else, then it's probably better to add cools too. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna add some of these cools I'm going to turn into blues. I mean, some of these warms will I'll, I'll turn into blues, especially around the back here. Like there, over here too. On the ears, why not? Now, ears are supposed to have very intense warms actually like that so what we are doing now is just adding all sorts of warms and cools in multiply layers i'm going to go back using the blue uh here a little bit in the back shoulders here so this where the chest meets the arms so pretty much underarms you can keep that warm but the further it goes from that because it's uh, more exposed to here instead of being hidden away in between two body parts you can make cooler Also here under under this upper arm here uh, so after we've done all that we should add a glow and on procreate or Photoshop I believe it's called linear dodge but on CSP it's called add glow and it doesn't matter if I'm doing it using a painterly style or if i'm doing it using airbrushes when i do this i always use airbrushes and what linear dodge does with airbrushes oof, that's too bright though it makes it as if it's catching light naturally because you're not losing any of those details underneath when you do it like this if you use like a linear dodge and it's good to go in now and just start to intensify the highlights in some places see how good that just looks Oh, uh, would be good here too on the ear. Why oh, it's looking very pink, huh? I wonder why. Is it supposed to be color dodge? No, it's supposed to be add glow. On Procreate, even if you go all the way down into the more darker colors, it's still very intense, but on CSP, it seems like I have to go quite close to the color just white to make it look glowy. Yeah, see, if, even this is like not white. I'm already close to the color white, but it's not glowing at all. very 
Very strange. What should I do? Is there something wrong with my brushes? Hmm. What if I do color dodge? Ah, it's supposed to be glow dodge. Okay. So let's go back to using the airbrush. I, I won't be able to draw this thing on Procreate, by the way. It's massive. It's like 6K. It would have given up long ago. Oh, instead of giving up, it would probably severely l limit the amount of layers I'll be able to use. And drain the battery. Because Procreate is always smooth, right? But it drains a lot of battery the more. Uh, the heavier type of document that you work with. So it's better to just do it on PC. Um, if you're going to be doing like a larger scale painting like this. Delete, delete. Go with this one. Oh, it's not full opacity. Okay, here we go. Whoa, what is going on? Oh, because it's on delete. Okay. It should work now. Huh? Why is it not glowing? It's not glowing. It's glowing in some places, but not everywhere. I wonder why. Huh. I would like to make this glow. How can I do that here? What if I do it again on like a layer above everything? Like way up here. Glow dodge. See, it works here. I wonder why it didn't work down there. Okay, clear that layer. Let's give her one here on the cheek and on the eye that not that one eye it needs to be white pure white can I do it with this okay it works now Let's cancel that one and make it white like this so both left and right would have the same amount of highlights also highlight this part there we go. Okay. Let's go bigger again. Um, I wonder if like a purple would be good. Like a pale purple. Oh, too bright. Okay, now I think since this is pretty much like a big balloon. Whoa. Maybe next to it. Oh, 
ね。Nah. I think we can go with the flat brush now and just erase. Straight up erase flat like that. And erase flat here too. Okay. So there we go. Skin. Let's go over it real quick. For a painterly piece, well, I mean, the type of the focus today was mostly the face, right? And for the rest of the body, I just, the lower I go, the fewer detail. I did see pretty much nothing here, right? It's just nothing. So most of the details are on the face and the theory theorizing and practice is on the face and not so much the rest of the body, but that's how you do it for making skin. So you, it's okay to start out making it look pasty or like monochrome uh, because you can always add warms and cools later on to make it look like an actual human being. If you make it cool everywhere, it might work if she was in some place that has no warmth. Like if the whole painting was blue or something. But pretty much for making people, you do it this way. You add warms and cools. And then towards the end, you add highlights. Like these glows, because people have reflective skin, right? So hope you enjoyed that. Hope you learned something. Because I, I quite enjoyed this. Uh, let's see what else I got here. Oh, so this is uh, the painting. Uh, my file. That I'm going to continue working on. For the actual commission itself. But the I might do another video of rendering out the character on the left right I mean what I did with this one character on the right can pretty much be applied to well more like whatever I did here with her I did with her too but I took about maybe 15 minutes to like get that done and this took me i don't know how long this took me i haven't been looking at the clock maybe an hour but see how because if i'm painting alone i'm not explaining anything to you then it's much faster right no brainer but just look at how the same principle applied even if it doesn't take as long and not much detail is put into it it's still fairly acceptable to look at this and agree that that's what a human body sort of looks like right so hope you enjoyed that i'm going to put some photos at the end of this video to just show you um aside from this one painting just to show you some examples of human skin where i've applied the same technique so uh shadows first and then no outlines or sketch first right and then add add shadows and then add the skin color underneath Put some blues and warms on top and then highlights at the end and this is what you get uh, but i think i have to fix something there like that part near the eye 
because I didn't notice it, right? Because I was using the wrong layer blending mode. But this is what this is so intense. I gotta get rid of it. Okay, this is way too intense. Okay. Uh, I think we're good. Yeah. So let me know what you think. You think I should finish this? Because, okay, you know what? I'm going to finish, I'm going to save this as another file. If you'd like, I can do that again, but over here with her, this one. So you, instead of one character, uh, one character's skin rendered out, you know, you'll have two right next to each other. So I guess that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Do it now. And like the video. You better do it now. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.